Today we're going to make a blackberry peach pie in all butter pie crust. The filling is thick but still like juicy. The peaches are tender and the blackberries stay kind of whole but some of them disperse into the juice and it makes this beautiful like beautiful color on top. Ah, this pie is amazing. Tastes like summer. Let's get into it. So the first step that you're going to want to do is prepare your pie dough. I actually made my vodka all butter pie crust last night um, in preparation for this very event. And um, you're just going to want to make sure that you have enough for a double crust pie. So that means that I just doubled my recipe. Um, and then I divided it into two and flattened them out and then I popped them in the fridge. Um, if you got pie crust that you already made weeks in advance in your freezer, go you. And you'll just want to like put that in the fridge to thaw overnight or, you know. And then the next step is we're going to peel our peaches. So I'm going to peel these with a peeler um, because that's kind of the stage of ripeness that they're at. But you can also reference my uh, three ways to peel peaches video on all the different ways that you could possibly peel your peaches. It's time to roll out our pie dough. So um, we are going to do obviously a double crust pie. I'm going to make a little lattice on the top just to be super fancy, you know, you know me. Um, so I'm going to set one aside. I'm going to roll out my bottom crust first. All right, so get yourself a rolling pin, some bench flour, and my dough is, is pretty cold right now. Um, it hasn't temped at all, and so I'm going to be very gentle with it uh, when I'm rolling it out. I'm not going to be super aggressive or it's going to crack, the butter's going to crack. Nothing terrible is going to happen because it's not puff pastry, but, you know, just saying. Love. If your pie crust starts to shrink, then you're going to want to pop it in the fridge and then just give it a nice little, little chill sesh um, and then continue rolling it. I'm just going to roll it to about an eighth of an inch. Um, this recipe will fit into like either a 10 or a 9. A 10 deep dish might be kind of aggressive, but you can make it work. Now you can roll this on your rolling pin and then unroll. I don't love that method. I prefer the fold, transfer, and unfold method. Personal pref. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge while I roll out the top crust, and then we will proceed with the filling. And onto the top crust. Dust your bench flour, just like the bottom crust. And we're going to proceed. So this one's been sitting on the counter, so it's a little bit more temped, so I don't have to be quite as gentle with it. Now, the reason I like this French rolling pin is because then you can kind of like assign pressure to specific places a little easier than with the, the straight rolling pin. And now we've got ourselves a beautiful a thin pie crust. This is going to be our top crust. So it's going to be a lattice because that's what I've decided. You can poke some holes, you can put it on top, nobody's judging. Um, but we're gonna make a lattice today because I'm feeling fancy. Now I'm gonna make my lattices, this is very convenient for us today, the width of my ruler. I know. And then we're just gonna go ahead and kind of like whoosh, use the ruler. Do you have to use a ruler? No. I love sometimes to make a nice asymmetrical pie crust where you like have, you know, different sizes and it's super fun and you know, you're just doing whatever you want. Don't forget your edges because there are some small pieces where you're gonna need to kind of fill in with some side, side pieces and you're gonna want to have some extras chilling about to make it work. Now, I like to, you can also draw the circle here to make sure that it is big enough, but you can just kind of eyeball it and see where it's gonna be. And you're like, all right, I got this. Start in one direction. I'm gonna make a little bit of a gap. I don't always make a gap, but today we're gapping. I like to kind of, okay, so I remember that my center is here and I'm going to, you know, keep that in mind. You're like, you're gonna run out. You're right. You could make a double, like, batch and then, you know, you could have yourself all the scraps in the world, but then you're gonna have a whole lot left over. And I'm not into waste, so here we are. Take your pie dish look at it and you're like, okay, I need a little bit right here and I need a little bit right here. That's it, right? So you're gonna go ahead and take a little bit from this, a little bit from this, and this. And then what are we gonna do? Yes, 
we are going to put them together like that. And no one will know. Voila. Now I'm gonna get this in the fridge to chill. Um, again, you could make one and a half times and then you could have more than plenty to deal with, but this is how to make one out of a one times recipe. Get this in the fridge to chill while we make our filling. It's time to make our filling. So our pie crust is chilling, obviously, and we've already peeled our peaches, and we are ready to get going. So I'm going to hope that these are free stone, which just means that they're gonna come off the stone. Um, and I'm going to cut around them like that. Not horizontally, not like around the equator, but up and down, because it just makes it easier to pull off the pit. Now we are going to cross our fingers and hope that they are freestone peaches, which just means that they're going to pop right off their pit. If they don't want to come off their peach pit, that's fine. Just cut around the peach pit. All right, so now we have chopped all our peaches off of the pits. Um, and then we're just going to cut them. And we're just going to do slices, right? Like nothing fancy. I like a nice big piece of peach in my pie. I don't like it to be all you know, tiny and kind of chopped. So we are just gonna do big sections, which is also convenient given that we cut to cut them off the pit and they're already in sections. So lots of our work is done. Great. Now we've got our peaches and we're gonna put them in our bowl. Not that one. And now without further ado, we're going to mix our pie filling. Okay, so we got our peaches, sugar, lemon juice, about one lemon, one small lemon. And I'm just gonna mix those up. Um, I like to taste before I add my thickener. So peaches are obviously super juicy. These are giant market blackberries, and so they're gonna also be juicy. So I've got myself some tapioca here. You could use cornstarch. Um, and I'm just going to stir that in, but just like cornstarch, it does need to boil in order to um, activate. So we're just going to stir that in. So we've got that, and then we're going to put our blackberries. That's about a cup. We might put, oh, might put a few on the, drop them in the pie, make sure they're distributed, but for now, about a cup. That's the filling. I know. It's like, do we even need to talk about it? Yes. So there it is, it's done. And we are going to check our pie dough and see if it's ready to line our dish. Now we don't want to rush our pie dough. No, no. We don't want shrinkage. We don't want any unfortunate pie incidents. And we're gonna, we're gonna check in with it. We want it to be kind of firm to the touch. Not as firm as when we first rolled it out, uh, but you know, firm and cold. She's ready! Okay, so we got our top crust. You're like, we got our pie dish. Go ahead and grab your bottom crust. If it's a little too cold, then you're gonna let it, you know, let it let it warm up a little bit before you put, you know, before you press on it, or it's going to crack. And then we're gonna take our filling. You can also, if you want a thick, like a really thick pie, you can pre-cook and then cool this filling before you put it in your pie, pie crust, um, which will also kind of, you know, you can also get more filling in there then. Yeah, it's more is more, am I right? All right. You know what I'm gonna add? More blackberries. Because we can. Bam. Look at that. It's gonna be so good, guys. All right, now we're gonna take our top crust and we're gonna place it on our bottom crust. Whoosh. Bam, there she is. And now we roll. You can roll in, you can roll out, um, I found that um, rolling out actually helps kind of keep it cinched together. Sometimes if you roll in, it has a tendency to pop open, uh, especially if you were super amazing with your pie crust. So go ahead and just... Now you could finish the sides however you'd like. I'm just gonna do an easy little kind of fluting. Boom, she done. So now she has to chill again, dear, sadly. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the fridge. So I'm gonna let this chill in the refrigerator for like at least 30 minutes to really let the kind of the butter re-solidify and to really kind of just complete
completely cool down so that we get that nice flaky crust. And meanwhile, I'm gonna preheat my oven to 350 degrees convection. Um, if you don't have convection, that's fine. Regular's fine. Don't increase it to 375 or you're gonna get yourself a very brown situation on top. So into the refrigerator it goes. Preheat your oven. So our pie is chilled about an hour. Um, our oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Um, and our pie is cold to the touch um, and it's you know firm so I'm just going to go ahead and brush the top of my pie with a bit of heavy cream um, you could stop there you could use egg wash um, but you know I never miss a chance to use turbinado sugar so that's what we're going to do and then we are going to do a generous generous sprinkling of turbinado sugar we're not going to stress about whether it gets inside because it's going to be delicious in there too. All right, she done. And now she's going to pop her in the preheated oven. Um, it's going to bake, you know, probably about 45 minutes. We're going to wait until we see the, this, the filling bubbling um, because remember we need to cook that thickener. Um, and also we want our pie to be nice and thick and cooked all the way through. And we want our crust to be nice and golden brown. In she goes. She's out. This actually baked a, almost an hour and 20 minutes um, because it just took a little longer and that's, that's totally fine. What's most important though is that you see the filling bubbling in the center um, and obviously this on the outside was bubbling and because you know it's it kind of leaches out before it's done, um, but really you want to see that kind of setting. You see how it's already starting to set. It's only been cooling like five minutes and it's already starting to set on the top. So you know that this is going to be juicy and luscious inside and I am so stoked. But sadly, we do have to wait for it to cool. You know, if you wanted to just like wait 20 minutes and then dig in, you could totally do that. But in order for it to kind of set, the filling to set and then to have a nice slice, we definitely have to like kind of let it cool completely and then uh, if you want to reheat it you can reheat it but i really want you to see just like the beautiful gorgeous inside uh but we have to wait it is finally time to try so excited so i actually let this cool completely on the counter to room temperature it took several hours um, and then i wrapped it and i put it in the fridge overnight because i didn't have enough time i wanted to show you the final set product um, and I knew it needed to cool completely. So here we are. I'm excited. You should be excited. Okay, here we go. Sorry, that was a lot of... Again, if you want a thicker filling, you are going to have to pre-cook your peaches. So we're gonna have to go back in and get more Feeling. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna get some blackberries, some peaches, some crust. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. The filling is thick but still juicy. The peaches are cooked and soft but still, still really tender. Uh, and the blackberries, for the most part, like held their shape. And oh, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Plus, this crust is flaky. Yeah. Am I right?